In this lesson, we will talk about some security related mount options. Let me show you some things on the screen first. If I'm using ls on slash, the root directory, we can see the different directories uh, that exist in the Linux file system hierarchy. And as you know, the directories in the Linux file system hierarchy are pretty specific. So files are always written to uh, the same directory for specific reasons. And some directories are a candidate for being split off so that you can mount them with different mount options, like the temp directory, for example, or the var directory, or the var log directory, or what about the user directory, or the home directories. These are the most common examples of directories that typically are split off uh, for securing them with different mount options. Now let's have a look at the mount options first. If you go to the man page of the mount command, there is something about options. It's not command line options I'm looking for, it's a file system independent mount options that I'm looking for. You can see all the different mount options being listed here. Some of the options that are available in this file are in particular very interesting for security, like no dev and no SUID or no exec. So these options restrict the possibilities of what can happen with a file system that has been mounted with those specific options. No dev means no devices can be accessed from this file system. And you can imagine that no dev is something that you, wa you might want to consider for all of these directories, because who is going to store devices in slash home? No suit means no set user ID programs may be running. As you know, set user ID is a, is a dangerous permission where the program that is going to be executed will not be executed with the permissions of the person who executes it, but with the permissions of the owner. And that is definitely something that you don't want to see for slash home, for example. No exec is an interesting one as well, which prevents users from running executables from specific directories. And you probably know executables are supposed to be in slash USR and not in one of those other directories. Another thing that you might consider for security is using RAM file systems like TMP, for example, which is used for the storage of temporary files. Every user is allowed to write to the TMP directory. Do you really want the files that users write to TMP to be persistent across reboots? If not, put it on a RAM file system instead of using a normal Linux file system. Now, if you have decided which options to use, uh, you can put the, the options in the etc fs tab. Uh, you have probably seen how to use options in etc fs tab before, so let me show you real quick. In etc fs tab, we have the column that often uh, shows defaults for default options, and you can change that to match any of the options that you want to use. And that's all you need to know about security related mount options. Let me do a demo with these mount options. So we have an already mounted file system, which is the dev mapper secret file system. I want to show you mount dash o remount comma no exec on dev mapper secret which is the easiest way to put uh, an additional mount option to the file system. Now this dev mapper secret is mounted on slash secret. So let's write a small shell script. Let's make it executable and let's run it. And as you can see, permission denied. Now, why is permission denied? Well, not because it's not executable. It is denied because of the no exec mount option. Let's do it one more time using just mount dash o remount. I want to verify that 
the no exact mount option is no longer available and if right now we are going to run it again you can see that the script now runs and that's a simple example of how you can test this uh, additional security related mount option let's move on to the next lesson